going to invite Janet Benson and Fran McKeigny to the um, to the stage, and they're going to talk about one of the research and practice uh, um, elements, one of the work, one of the projects at work in uh, Learn of Age today. So Fran is from Hibernia College, and Janet is our own learning lead, and they're going to look at the promise and challenges of building a community in distance and hybrid learning environments. And I'm dying to find out about this one because I missed the last time that they were talking about it. So great, thank you. Hi. Thanks, Anne. And Mary, this really is the graveyard shift. So thank you so much for still being here, folks. And I know there's drinks after this, so we're not going to keep you too long. Um, we'd be really nasty if we we're going to do that. So as Anne said, my name is Janet Benson, and I'm at the Learning Lead at Learnovate, and I'm a researcher at Learnovate. And I'm one of the lucky ones who's been working on this project with Hibernia College over the last number of years, looking at a cohort app called Moxo, which was introduced into Hibernia College to kind of develop online communities, encourage collaboration, that kind of stuff. What I'm going to do is hand you first to Fran, who's going to talk a little bit about the amazing work that Hibernia College do, um, and a little bit about a sort of an intro to, to the research. I will then do a little bit around the theory. Why are we doing this? Why do we develop these online communities? What's the benefit to the learners? What's the benefit to the organizations? Um, and then Fran is going to do the really interesting part, which is to share the insights that have come out with the study that we've done together and give you some real key takeaways if this is something that you're going to plan to do in your own organization. So I will hand it over to Fran McKegney. Thanks, Fran. I'll go over here. Thanks, Janet. So for, the, for those of you who don't know how Bernie College, let me give you a really brief introduction and set the context for the work that we've been doing in the last couple of years. We are a uh, blended learning college based here in Dublin. Um, we're best known for our teacher training programs. At any one time, we have approximately 2,000 student teachers on our, on, our, on our programs. We're blended learning, which means that we design the program from the ground up 50% uh, online, 50% in person. And we design the curriculums so that they are fully integrated, uh, fully integrated from the beginning. So we kind of combine the flexibility of online with the, the human contact and the, and the, and the necessity of the of the face to face uh, components of it. We are, so our students can be all around the country. Uh, we don't have we are a digital college, so we don't have a campus here that they have to come to uh, in Dublin. We organise our students into regional groups. Uh, so from a physical meetup perspective, we will have Dublin groups and Cork groups and Galway groups and so on, and we will have more remote people in, 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 in groups um, and, and so on. And then we're organized to support this regional structure. Um, so all of our systems, including technical support and so on, are, um, are organized to support these structures. About three and a half years ago, uh, we decided to run a very detailed uh, examination of uh, you know, as we look forward, what should teaching and learning look like in Hibernia College? Um, so we asked two big questions, really, of the teaching staff, support staff, the college, the students. We asked, what will teaching and learning in Hibernia College look like in the next five to ten years? And then for those of us on the technology side, that would translate into what digital architecture do we need to put into place to support whatever vision emerges? Um, we then spent a lot of time actually deciding how would we best get at that? How, how would we, you know, how we structure? We ended up, after discussion, coming up with an initial set of six workshops that we invited everybody to on a series of themes. So, you know, so, you know, the role of mobile technologies in Hibernia College's future, student identity in the student journey, using digital technologies to strengthen community and learning in the regional groups, collaborative learning and research future of the VLE, future of student support, and so on. So a series of themes. And what we would do is have somebody come in, give a short talk, 10, 15 minutes, and then open it up to discussion. What we were trying to do was get at the issues uh, that were there and how we should build our architecture around that and what, you know, therefore, a, a clearer vision of what the, the future will bring. Um, we debated for six, eight, 10, 12 months, um, at lots and lots of discussions. We had the six in England, we, had, we went deeper into certain, into certain topics and so on. Collaborative working, collaborative learning, collaborative research, uh, community building, community building in an online context, making sure students didn't feel isolated, didn't feel on their own, particularly students that may be more remote, uh, that we could support them better and, and so on. As you can see, were key themes. Um, so, 
in response to that, we made a decision, and I'll talk more about this when I come back, we, we made a decision to deploy a collaboration platform uh, that every student, that every member of staff would have an app that would be on all of their devices and that we would use this in the digital context to try to build community and so on. So two and a half years ago, about a year after this, but two and a half years ago, we launched our cohort app. Um, when it goes into the, when, it, when you get into the, the app stores, you're allowed five pictures to go with it. So we tried to tell the story in five, fr in, in five frames. So to the students, so you can see, the, we call it the cohort app, learn together is the tagline for it, collaborate with your fellow students in shared workspaces for learning and research on all of your devices, wherever you are. Um, and we evaluated a series of technologies, you know, Teams and Slack and uh, a Danish one called Aula and so on. And we ended up partnering with a company called Moxo, a Californian uh, company called Moxo. Not going to get into that. Today, if anybody wants to ask me about it, I'm happy to communicate with that. We actually have our Vice President of Alliances for Moxo, Manny Kadir, at the table here. We can chat to him about it. We did, the other thing that was a very rich feature, very modern, um, uh, so you've got you know text, audio, video chat, audio, video conferencing, ability to create groups, and I'll talk more about the group structures that, that we did there later on. Uh, you can you know share documents. You've got document markup stuff and and so on. Very powerful search. So if you know research paper is updated into the app, into the app, the app on the fly will create a searchable index of that. So you can actually search inside documents and stuff like that. So very 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 rich, uh, very rich feature set. We also integrated key components with our VLE. So Moodle is our is our LMS. So the Moodle calendar gets the, the, all the calendar events get pushed uh, get pushed to the app. So students can just look at their phone or their iPads and see other upcoming events. If uh, if an event changes, it automatically up, does it updates in the background. They can access the library, policies and procedures, and and, and and so on. So after much debating and selection of of a partner uh, to do this with, we went live, and we've now two and a half years of insights, learnings, we're still learning a lot about it. And I'm going to come back in a couple of minutes and just talk about some of the things that we've, that we've learned. But for now, I'm going to hand back to Janet. Thanks, Fran. That's great. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about the whys. Why are we doing this? Why do we want to build collaborative workspaces, um, especially in an online environment? What does it do for us? Um, uh, I'll talk a bit, little bit about the benefits and then a little bit about some of the challenges that are associated with that. And then Fran will talk about how we address some of those challenges as well uh, throughout the project. Um, what I find is really interesting, the research shows that, you know, that collabor collaboration doesn't just provide opportunities for people to engage and be more engage with each other and motivated it actually improves learning outcomes in, in comparison to the results of um, individuals that work on their own. I think that's really interesting. It's not just about, yeah, you know, I'm interacting with people. This is engaging. It actually does improve learning outcomes. It prompts those activities that are beneficial for learning. So the production of information for others, the co-construction co of ideas, and those opportunities then as well for asking questions, problem solving, brainstorming, all of those things that we, we are now, I suppose, considering like transverse or 21st century skills that are really important. Um, collaboration being a really big one of those. Um, and again, we kind of all, a lot of people here will know this, but encouraging collaboration in the online environment, especially, I suppose we're looking at, again, back to COVID a little bit. Um, it does really help with learner motivation and engagement, gets people kind of working together. Um, it, it just provides that better and a more engaging learning experience or just an experience in general. And as I said, like, you know, people who are working in a hybrid or learning in a hybrid or very fully remote environment, like we know that sort of isolation can be an issue. But what I find is really interesting, like providing those opportunities for, for collaboration can really help with people's well-being, which is really important. And again, don't want to keep talking about COVID, but we know that well-being has become a really big issue coming out of that, that whole situation and that isolation can be something that's really challenging for people. So encouraging those opportunities for collaboration can really help with people's um, psychological and, and emotional well-being. Um, and online students with a stronger sense of community, I think this is really interesting, um, they can perceive greater satisfaction with their academic programs and that can result in fewer dropouts. And this is something myself and Fran were just talking about the other day, that being quite a big issue in, in, in a lot of um, academic institutions, that those dropout rates can be really can be really high. And, and especially when it's kind of an online environment as well, where people, you know, it's easier to drop out maybe, um, that it can really help with some of that. So I think that's, that's something that's really interesting. But while we have all those kind of benefits, um, there are also challenges, of course, and for one thing, and I think this is important, um, and I speak about, I suppose, online collabor 
collaboration in kind of different contexts a good bit. I think it's really important that people are given a role in an online collaborative setting. Otherwise, there can be unequal kind of contribution. And it's the same with any kind of teamwork or if you're working in a group work activity. If you find that some people are, are just doing nothing, that can be really demotivating for others. So I think it's very important to ensure that everyone has a role to play in that kind of collaborative um, setting. And also, if there are errors being produced that are then used by other people, that is something that I guess a moderator in an online environment needs to be able to control. So making sure that any of the information that's out there is 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 real um, and that it's accurate is really important because that again that can kind of encourage people to kind of step away from the, cl the collaboration in the online space. Um, and the nature of those collaborative tasks and those interactions can influence the effectiveness of the collaboration. So it's very important, I think, and again, I think it's with any online learning activity, it's important to look at what are the kind of activities that you're getting people to do. And something that I know Fran is gonna to touch on a little bit later is that it's not a stick on thing. We're not like saying, okay, we're gonna, today we're gonna to do this collaborative activity. It has to be integral into the entire learning experience. Otherwise students realize, well, this is just something that they're getting us to do as an additional activity. It has to be implicit into the organization or into the institution or into the learning experience, which is something that Hibernia College have been doing really well. Um, and again, we have to look at things. So we talk a lot about, I suppose, diversity, inclusion. You know, we have to kind of take into account people's different perspectives and their different diverse background knowledge. All those kind of things like people's beliefs have to be taken into account when you're setting up that collaborative space because obviously you want everyone to feel included um, and it's important that everyone has a voice. So I think it's good to kind of get a feel for where people are at, maybe even before you set up that kind of collaborative space and um, ensure that everyone's voice is being heard um, and that there's no kind of negativity and that comes with anything like discussion uh, forums or anything like that. Like you, the moderation part is really, really important that um, all the, the activities and all the interactions are very positive. So a lot of people here will, will know about communities of practice. It's been around for a long time, um, and Lave and Wenger and all that kind of stuff. Um, so in generating those virtual communities of practice, it's important to use authentic activities. And this is something that comes out of the research a lot. Um, what you need to do is really bring in real world relevance and th those real opportunities to collaborate and also to reflect. We know that works really well for learning in general, that reflection is a really good um, thing to bring into a good learning experience makes the learning experience more effective. But definitely in these virtual communities of practice, that kind of thing, those authentic activities are key. And in all the research that we did at the start of the project that we did with Hibernia, it was really looking at these virtual communities of practice and doing kind of a literature review before we went into kind of the, the follow on pieces of the study, which were kind of mixed methods. And we did a lot of, you know, interviews and surveys and stuff like that. This came out, this came out like kind of on top as being, you know, using those authentic, authentic activities is really important. Um, and something else that I know Fran is going to touch upon, like we, they have de developed a lot of student, um, student, student, student groups, student staff groups, and staff staff groups, um, and those kind of interactions really help strengthen uh, st strengthen students' sense of membership and influence, cause, and that can kind of lead to more learning effectiveness. And I think that's the thing we need to be clear about as well is that we're not just doing these online collaborative. Uh, workspaces or generating these kind of online communities just because we want people to feel included. We, as I said earlier, it also leads to greater um, learning effectiveness, which is really important. So if you're if you're in a college like Hibernia, you want people to learn, and that's that has to be the outcome. Um, and again, you know, I think it it comes with. I suppose, discussion forums and this kind of um, online communities as well. Like tutors and admins really need to provide relevant mechanisms to encourage those interactions. So again, you can't just bring an app such as this into an organization and hope that people are gonna use it and also that they're gonna use it for the right reasons. So again, it's all about setting expectations. And I know um, Fran will probably touch upon the fact that those workshops were held with staff and students at the beginning to kind of set the expectations about what we wanted students and staff to, to use the app for and then what not to use it for, I suppose, as well. So, Fran? <laughs> yeah, I'll jump off this side. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> so I, I have three slides, and then you will let you free. Um, so let me just talk about what we've we learned in terms of working with the staff first. Then I'm going to do the students, and then just other observations uh, that I have. Um, I think the whole workshop process was an incredibly valuable thing to do. Um, I know that people came to me and I know to Mary as well and said just to be asked, just to, to share in, in a creation of, of a vision was, was a really powerful, was a really powerful thing to do. But on the practical side, there were a lot of issues that came up that we had to work through. 
you can imagine content moderation, uh, and a lot of these issues are interrelated. I, I won't be able to have time to, to speak to them all, but happy to sort of talk afterwards um, if, you, if you want to deal with them. But let's just look at that first lot together, and then I'll just pick out some stuff. So some of the you know, some of the issues that you need to talk through if you were thinking of doing something like this that we had to work through are, you know, issues of content moderation, right? So if you give every student a voice, which we're all in, in favor of, what happens? And if any student can say anything in a collaborative environment, what you need to be fearful of, right? So uh, you can imagine that was an issue. Group structures. Um, increase workload. So group structures. I'll talk more about group structures. That's actually quite a big. It's quite a big issue. Um, and, you know, and a member of staff says, "Well, what if somebody contacts me at nine o'clock at night? What, what do I do? And is do I have? Is this just additional workload on top of what I already do? Uh, how do I? You know, how do I manage that? Um, impropriety is obviously a huge issue as well. What happens if there's an academic impropriety? How do we deal with that? What if something happens in one of these groups that, that you know, or if there's bullying, cyberbullying going on in a group, how do, we, how, do we, how do we manage that? So there was a very rich discussion and debate about these kinds of issues, which went on for several months. Um, at the end of all of this, and, and I can co come back on this, we made the decision, no content moderation. Um, so uh, there, you know, again, uh, William in the last, in, in, the, in the group section was very interested when he said maybe one of the outcomes is that we will need to trust our students more um, and, and, and so on. So, you know, our PME students, our, our professional master in education are, uh, you know, they're in their 20s, um, they're adults. We don't monitor their email. Um, why would we monitor their private conversations? Why would we? Why would we do? Why would we do that? Now, that's not to say we're ignoring the issue, and I'll talk about what we did put in place uh, to, to, to deal with uh, to, to deal with that. Issues of like, is this instant messaging? So if, if I get a, a question, do I have to answer it, or you know, how, how does that go? So all of those issues, um, all of those issues came up, and we kind of worked through uh, what the implications of that and how we would manage those issues, and then. People actually became really enthusiastic about it. We, we shifted from the, the pessimism to the to, to more to the positive aspects of it because what you really will do is increase the level of engagement that you're getting. Uh, I, I, and so, so the positive aspects came to the fore. Then it really became you, you need to give the staff enough time. If you're going to use a digital technology, you need to give the staff enough time to get familiar. Some will be technically savvy, some will not be comfortable with, with technology and so on. So you need to give those people time to, uh, to, to, uh, to get used to it. So what we did was we, we provided training, we did a lot of support uh, to, to the staff, and then we brought the staff up on their own for three months before we put any students on the system, right? And we did a, exercises and stuff like that so people would get used to, so by the time any student appeared in the system, uh, staff were comfortable with, you know, staff were comfortable with the, uh, with the technology that, that we had. Let me just talk about group structures for a second. Um, as Janet said, the way it's organized is staff can create groups with other members of staff or students. Students can create peer groups with their immediate cohort, but they can't create groups with members of staff. So a student can't create, I want to talk to Anne Devitt, it's 11 o'clock at night, I'm going to create a group and I'm going to just uh, reach out to her. They can't do that. They physically can't do that. In the, uh, they, they, they physically can't do that. So it's staff, staff, staff to students and student to, uh, uh, student, to student. The, 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 co the, the staff to student groups, we thought very carefully about. We created a small number of what we regarded as key group structures for, for that. Academic writing, uh, I mean, there were a bunch of, of groups, but only those ones which were necessary. So again, people wouldn't have this fear about over, you know, work overload, after hours, uh, after hours uh, working, and, and, and so on. And at the time that we, we launched then, so we had, uh, we had carefully thought out what the staff student group structures, um, group structures would be. Janet has mentioned this, and this is a really important issue, you know, in a way, it's much easier to launch something like this in a higher education setting than it is in a corporate setting because your work is the program. Um, and for, for these collaborative um, platforms to work, it needs to be in the flow of your work. If you have your work here and you have sort of 
ability to collaborate over there, nobody's ever going to go over there. It's going to, be, it's going to become a desert. So you, as again, a, a college that designs the programs as an integrated program with both digital and face-to-face and -face elements, you, you design the engagements into it and you make sure that the, that the, that the, uh, that the, sort of, that the program is, a, is an integral part of their experience of, colla of collaboration. In Hibernia, we do a, when new students come in, we do a two-week uh, orientation uh, before they go on to the academic program. And what we're doing there is a number of things, but including what we're doing in the, in the orientation program is we're familiarizing the students with what blended learning is going to look like. We're teaching them to use the, the, the tools and the apps that they're going to need for the program. So that by the time we start the academic program, they're comfortable with the environment and they understand what the, uh, what the demands are going to be and, and, and so on. So again, we include this in the orientation process so that they understand what, what, you know, what, what's going on. In terms of the students, uh, you know, students are easier. <laughs> They're very familiar with this. They all use WhatsApp. Um, so you know, no problem. All right? There was no problem getting them, getting them up and running. The bigger issue for them, particularly in the transitional phase, is trust and privacy. Right? So, so we're going to create these groups. Are you going to be watching, listening to everything I say? What if I say something inappropriate in here? You know, how's that? How's that? How's that going to work? How's that going to work? And we were very mindful of that at at, at the beginning. Um, so we gave a guarantee to students that student to student groups would be completely private. That we would not be in those groups. Um, we would not be monitoring those groups. I, again, I'm going to come to a big caveat in a second. Um, and uh, but still, there's a transition period when you introduce a technology like this and when you roll it out first. It takes a while for it to become just part of the woodwork. By the time we had a second and our third cohorts going on using the apps. You had students saying it's fine, you know, it's fine. It's just fine. it's just a part it's just a part of what we do. So that sort of trust issue is fine after a period of time, but there is a transition time in which you in which you have to manage it. How long does it take? I, I think when we were working through this, I said it would take four years for a full transition. It hasn't taken four years, but it takes a couple of years. It, do, it does take a couple of years. It's not it's not it, it, it's not instant. Um, yeah, I mean the other thing is, you know, email was the, the means of communication in the college, and now we have this whole collaboration, um, but you also have email, and you need to be clear about what, what's used for what, and how, how does that, you know, how did, they, how did they fit together? It's kind of, you know, it, understanding what collaborative workspaces are and how they work is incredibly important. You know, the, the thing about an email network is the node in the email, in, in the, in the email network is the email address of the person. So you think about us in any one day, we are going to, in any half an hour period, we're going to get a whole series of emails. They're all going to be on different subjects. And it's really hard to have any kind of a conversation with email. In a collaboration space, you create a space on a topic. You then invite the relevant people into that space to have the topic, to have that conversation. And that workspace can last for as long or as short as you like. So some of these workspaces will last for the whole program. Some of them can come and go, uh, can, can come and go as they, um, as as they, uh, as they will. So again, it's f in terms of ongoing educational dialogue, collaboration workspace is way more appropriate than just trying to have a conversation using email and, and, and so on. And we're used to this in school. You know, go to the physics lab to do your physics. You go to the gym to do your PE and, and so on. So we're kind of used to go to this whatever space it is to, to, to carry on with this particular conversation. Still found the training is needed with students. Um, they know how to use WhatsApp, but there's a lot of other stuff there, and they need to understand what we're trying to achieve, and so on. And I think we we're more assertive now after a couple of years in terms of that initial training. We were very democratic at the beginning. Now we're more, now we're more okay, because it's just another thing that you put out, you, you put out there uh, for them, and we're try, trying to get to help them to, uh, to understand. Final sort of things, you know, what you have to put into place. I talk about we guarantee the students' privacy. You, you have to have policies in place. You have to have communication policies in place. You have to have an escalation policy if something does happen. You've got to make sure your legal team are happy um, be, before, you, before, you, before you put that out. One of the killer features of the Moxa platform that we use for the cohort app is it has an audit trail in it. Um, so that means that in the event of something happening, a legal challenge or, um, you know, you said I got 75 in this exam, but actually only got 45, that we can recall the conversations even if they've been deleted. So we actually have a record of every conversation. 
it's under lock and key, our director of IT gets it, I can't see it, Mary can't see it, uh, and, and so on, and that we let the students know this from, you know, fr from the beginning. So knowing that you, you have a record of everything, should you need to call on it, means you can ease in terms of, uh, in terms of content moderation and, and, and so on. Um, what we found was, that, yeah, the level of engagement just dramatically bigger, I mean, just way, way up. Um, it's, it is very much a one-way path. We, we won't go back. Um, we're, we're not going to back. And as a journey, we have found it well worth doing. So, uh, yeah, that's, I think I'm out of time here. But let me uh, pass back to Anne.